اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی اکرام المسلم وارننگز آن ہارمنگ مسلمز حدیث اد پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واضلہ ابن الاقصا رضی اللہ عنہ نریت تر رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said do not rejoice at your brother's misfortune lest Allah may show mercy on him and afflict you. Do not rejoice at your brother's misfortune lest Allah may show mercy on him and afflict you. Tirmizi Muaz ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said He who reproaches his brother for sin from which he had repented will not die until he himself indulges in that sin. He who reproaches his brother for a sin from which he had repented will not die until he himself indulges in that sin. Tirmizi Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Anyone who calls his Muslim brother O infidel then surely infidelity returns to one of them. Either he is infidel as it is said or infidelity returns to the one who accused Muslim. Abu Zar radiallahu anhu narrates, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, He who calls someone an infidel or enemy of Allah but that person is not guilty, then these words return to the one who blamed Muslim. Imran ibn Hussain رضی اللہ عنہ narrates that Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said When a man calls his brother O infidel it is as if he has killed him When a man calls his brother O infidel it is as if he has killed him Bazzar Majma'u Zawaid Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضی اللہ عنہ narrates that Nabi صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said It is not befitting for a believer to curse others. It is not befitting for a believer to curse others. Tirmizi Abu Darda radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said The invokers of curses would neither be intercessors nor witnesses on the day of resurrection. The invokers of curses would neither be intercessors nor witnesses on the day of resurrection. Muslim Sabit ibn Dahik رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ narrates that Nabi صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said Cursing a believer is like killing him. Cursing a believer is like killing him. Abdurrahman ibn Ghanam رضی اللہ عنہ narrates that Nabi صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said The best slaves of Allah and those who when seen remind one of Allah and the worst slaves of Allah are those who backbite, who cause separation among the friends and who seek to distress the upright. Musnad Ahmad Majma'uz Zawaid Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came upon two graves and said, Indeed, both occupants are being punished, but not for something big, not difficult to save oneself from. One did not save himself from drops of his urine and the other went about as a telltale. Bukhari Anas ibn Malik رضی اللہ عنہ narrates that Rasulullah صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم said When I was taken on the ascendance I passed by people who had nails of copper and they were scratching their faces and chests. I asked, O Jibreel, who are these people? He replied, they used to eat, meaning they used to backbite and eat human flesh and dishonor people. Abu Da'ud Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhumah narrates that we were with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when a foul odor arose. He said, do you know what this odor is? This odor is of those who backbite believers. Musnad Ahmad Majma'ud Dawaid Abu Sa'id 
And Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhum narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Backbiting is worse than fornication. The Sahaba asked, O oh Rasulullah, how is backbiting worse than, for, than fornication? He replied, A man commits fornication then seeks forgiveness. Allah forgives him. But a man who backbites is not forgiven until the one whom he has backbitten forgives him. Bayhaqi. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates, I said to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, It is enough for you that Safiya is such and such that is short. He said, Indeed you uttered such a word that if mixed in the sea, its bitterness would prevail the saltiness of the sea. Aisha radiallahu anha says, I imitated someone in front of him. He said, I do not like to imitate one even if I were to get so much and so much, that is a large amount of wealth. Abu Da'ud Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you know what is backbiting? Sahaba said, Allah and his messenger know better. He said, saying something about your brother he dislikes. It was asked, does the matter stand if what is said really exists in my brother? He replied, If what you say is true, then verily you have backbitten. But if it is not present in him, then you have slandered him. Muslim Abu Darda radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who mentions a fault in a person which is not present in him, so as to defame him, Allah will detain him in hellfire till he proves what he said. Tabrani Majma'uz Zabaid Uqba ibn Amir radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Undoubtedly, lineage is something not to be used for slandering or reproaching anyone. All of you are the children of Adam. Your example is like a sa'a, which is a measure of volume which you have not filled, that is none of you is perfect and each of you has some defect in or the other. None has superiority over another, except in deen and good deeds. It is enough reproach for a man to be foul-mouthed, obscene, miserly and coward. Musnad Ahmad Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that a man sought permission to see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, he is a bad son of his tribe, or he is a bad man of his tribe, and then said, let him come in. When he came in, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked to him very politely. Aisha radiallahu anha asked, O oh Rasulullah, you talked to the man very politely, though verily you said about him what you said. He said, the worst man in the eyes of Allah on the day of resurrection will be he whom people avoid meeting because of his wickedness. Abu Da'ud Note Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said these words to record the truth so as to save people from his evil and as such cannot be considered a, back, back, a backbiting. However, he spoke with this man politely to educate us how to behave with such people and perhaps to rectify this person. Mazahir Haq. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The mu'min is straightforward and generous. The fajr is deceitful and mean. Fajr means a sinner. Abu Da'ud. Note, this hadith means that a mu'min by nature is free of treachery and cunning. He always refrains from troubling and forming ill opinion about people because his temperamental goodness is against this. As opposed to this, a fajr is cunning and deceitful. Temperamentally, he is inclined to spread evil and create disharmony. Tarjuman sunnah Anas radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who harms a Muslim verily harms me and he who harms me verily annoys Allah. 
Tabrani, Faiz al-Qadir. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The man who is most hateful to Allah is the one who quarrels and argues the most. The man who is most hateful to, the, to Allah is the one who quarrels and argues the most. Bukhari, Muslim. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Accursed is he who harms a mu'min or acts deceitfully towards him. Accursed is he who harms a mu'min or acts deceitfully towards him. Tirmizi. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood beside some people who were seated and said, Would you like me to distinguish between the best of you and the worst of you? They remained silent. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked this thrice. Then a man said, Do inform us, O Rasulullah, distinguish for us between the best of us and the worst of us. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of you is he in whom good hopes are placed and from whose evil people are safe. But the worst of you is he in whom good hopes are not placed and from whose evil people are not safe. Tirmizi Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, People possess two characteristics of infidelity, sarcastic criticism of lineage and loud weeping and wailing on the dead. Muslim Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not quarrel with your brother, nor joke with him in a manner which will hurt him, and do not make a promise to him which you do not honor. Tirmizi Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are three signs of a hypocrite. When he speaks, he lies. When he promises, he breaks it. When he is entrusted, he violates the trust. When he speaks, he lies. When he promises, he breaks it. And when he is entrusted, he, is, he violates the trust. Muslim Hudayfa radiallahu anhu narrates, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying, A telltale will not enter paradise. A telltale will not enter paradise. Bukhari. This means that the habit of telltale is amongst those serious sins which prevents admission into paradise. No one with this evil habit will be able to enter paradise. If Allah forgives someone with His mercy or cleanses someone through punishment only, then He will be qualified to enter Jannah. Ma'ariful Hadith. Khuraym ibn Fatik radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam offered Salatul Fajr after which he stood up and said false witnesses has been equated to associating a partner to Allah. He said these words thrice and then recited a verse of the Quran. So avoid the filth of idols and avoid speaking falsehood as people pure of faith to Allah not associating anything with him. Abu Da'ud Note, false witness is a grievous sin like shirk or polytheism or idolatry. So believers must refrain from this as they refrain from shirk and idolatry. Ma'ariful Hadith Abu Umama radiallahu anhu narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if anyone acquired what rightly belongs to another Muslim by his false oath, Allah has made hell obligatory for him and prohibited his admission into Jannah. A man asked, Even if it is a small thing, O Rasulullah, he replied, Even if it is a branch of the tree of Arak. Muslim Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever unjustly occupies a piece of land on the day of resurrection, he will be made to sink down the distance of seven earths. Whoever unjustly occupies a piece of land on the day of resurrection, he will be made to sink down the distance of seven earths. Bukhari Imran ibn Hussain radiallahu anhuma narrates that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever plunders is not from us. Whosoever plunders is not from us. Tirmizi. 
Abu Zar radiyallahu anhu narrates that Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, three men to whom Allah would neither speak on the day of resurrection nor look at them nor purify them for them is a painful punishment. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he repeated these words thrice. Abu Zar radiyallahu anhu said, they are unsuccessful and losers. Who are they, Rasulullah? The then Rasulullah said. The one who wears a trailing lower garment, the one who keeps recounting people of his generosity to them, and the one who sells the commodity by false swearing. Muslim. Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhuma narrates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever beats his slave unjustly will be retaliated against on the day of resurrection. Whoever beats his slave unjustly will be retaliated against on the day of resurrection. The Brani Majma'uz Zawa'id Note, beating of employees is also included in this warning. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Subhanaka Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Ala Al Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi Rahmatika Ya Arhamar Rahimeen La Ilaha Illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah